All right, y'all. Welcome back to the uh, No Name College Football Podcast. It is week nine in college football. Um, there is a decent amount going on this week. Uh, there's some stuff that kind of applies to end of the year conference champion stuff that's uh, about to go on. But let's talk about week eight real quick, uh, which was last week. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't really tuned in. I mean, I was watching it, but I wasn't really paying attention. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Um, Tuesday night, I uh, didn't watch any of these games. I kind of monitored the scores, but that was it. Wednesday, didn't care. Uh, Thursday, I did watch a little bit of this James Madison game as they improved to 7-0 over Marshall and was not tuned in Friday. Uh, I'll come back to this Clemson game, but let's start on Saturday. Um, I usually it's it's always like this. It's out of order every week. Uh, so we're just gonna start at Michigan, Michigan State. Michigan does it again. I feel like every week we've came on here and it's just Michigan's just kind of done what they were supposed to do and went about their business and either stayed in Michigan or went back to Michigan. Uh, they steamroll Michigan State. I know Michigan State's down big right now. Uh, a lot of just bad things going on in Michigan State for their program. Uh, Jacob, you want to talk about Penn State, Ohio State, man? Yeah, um, Penn State made both of us look really stupid. Um, Ohio State's just better, a lot better. Uh, Drew Allard didn't look like he belonged in this game. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. proved that he is a top two player in college football with Brock Bowers being out. He's probably the best player in college football. And you know, one side had him, one side didn't. Ohio State's defense is really good, which both of these defenses are really good. Um, but Ohio State's offense prevailed, so. Yeah, uh, you said they made us look really stupid. I'm not going to really say they made me look stupid because if you go back and you watch last week's episode when we were predicting this game, I was literally about to pick Ohio State, and then I was like, you know what, just because I'm kind of an Ohio State hater, I went back on it and didn't pick them, um, and Jacob saw it, but on my, my fantasy pick last minute, I actually uh, switched up and picked Ohio State to win this game. Uh, Penn State's offense looked horrid. I mean, yeah. it was absolutely terrible. Their defense obviously wasn't that bad, uh, but yeah, Marvin Harrison, 11 catches for 162 yards on a touchdown is – Amazing, especially considering he had Kalen King following him half the game, and Kalen King is uh considered a pretty much locked up first round pick in this year's uh upcoming NFL draft. Um, but yeah, uh Ohio State proves everybody wrong again, I guess. I don't know. Um, they were at home though. But Ohio State has it all out in front of them now. They just gotta win out and then get over that Michigan hump that they've been uh, you know not been able to get up the past two years or two years. Yeah. Right. Or two, 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 two years, years, two years, two years. Okay. Uh, man, Florida state Duke, uh, this game was a lot closer than what this final score yeah. showed. The first three quarters of this game was amazing. Um, Duke was actually up at halftime, uh, but then Riley Leonard, who came into this game with an injury designation, uh, ends up going back out of this game, even though he started, uh, with another injury. So unfortunate for Duke. I'm not going to sit here and necessarily say they were going to win this football game if Riley Leonard didn't go out. But uh, I mean, it definitely, it turns from a potential three or seven point loss or potential win to a 18 point loss. Jacob, we got anything on this one? Yeah. Duke was the more physical team. The first three quarters of this game. I mean, they were dominating both lines of scrimmage. It just came down to talent and depth in the end. Florida state's the more talented team. They're playing at home. Once they got the momentum, especially with Riley Leonard going out, they just never looked back. Yeah, for sure. Jordan Travis has a decent game. I'm still not too impressed with him though. I'm not buying, not buying the Jordan Travis hype just yet. Uh, Man, uh, this is a game that it didn't start till what 10 30, 11 o'clock hour time. Yeah. So it was one of those games that was hard to stay up and watch. I tried to watch as much of it as I can. Uh, Jacob started doing his poll for this week, uh, before this game started. And I said, Man, you, ne- you gotta hold off, you never know what's gonna happen. And Jacob was just, Nah, nah, it's okay, it's okay. 
Washington's going to beat the crap out of Arizona State. And sure enough, as you see here, uh, they didn't take the lead until the fourth quarter. Uh, and it was on a pick six uh, on top of that. Michael Penix Jr. down game after having a Heisman winning performance game the week before against Oregon. Uh, but, I mean, I will give Washington the benefit of the doubt in this game because it was absolutely pouring almost this whole entire game. Uh, I did fall asleep, though, trying to trying to watch the end of it. Uh, but, yeah, stinker from Washington. Maybe they get it out of their system. Uh, they've got a lot ahead yeah. of them. As Great well. teams win when they play bad. And I still got Michael Penix, spoiler alert, but Michael Penix is still the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, another, another close one. We had a lot of, we had some decently close ones that were surprising this week. Uh, Oklahoma at home against UCF. UCF, I will note this, not trying to like downplay this, this game or anything, but UCF w- had been without John Reese Plumley uh, for, I think, two games, maybe. I can't remember exactly. But they did get him back. I do think UCF is a significantly better team with John Reese Plumley than they are without him. Yeah. Um, but UCF, man, they gave Oklahoma a game. Dylan Gabriel has a little bit of a Heisman moment uh, and leads his team to a touchdown drive late in the game uh, to take the lead back. Uh, UCF scores has a chance to tie it up and runs one of the worst, actually one of the worst two point plays I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but yeah. And then somebody else did it too. Matter of fact, it was Penn state, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Penn state runs the same exact play literally almost like five minutes later um, when they scored late in that game also. But uh, yeah, it was terrible. Ah, it, probably the second worst play call of the day. I think yeah. you know what first is. Yeah, okay. Uh, Texas, now this is something I did not get to see any of this game at all because I had something to do kind of like in the very middle of the day. So I missed a chunk of football, mainly the back end of the 330 slate. So, Jacob, you <laughs> can the game, let me know. Yeah, uh, this game was just super competitive. Texas went up 21-0. And then Houston just clawed back into it, tied the game. Even, I think Houston, no, they didn't ever take the lead in this game. But they had the game tied in the fourth quarter. Costly interception at the end of this game. Uh, but Houston looked really, really good in this game. Yeah, uh, big news for Texas, though. Quinn Ewers out for at least a few weeks. Grade 2 AC joint strain or strain, yeah, some sprain, maybe something like that. I don't know. But he's out for a few weeks either way. Um, so big blow for Texas. Uh, but I mean, they're still in it, still a talented team. Okay. Let's see what Malik Murphy or Arch Manning does. Uh, another one I did miss because this was part of that 3 30 time frame, but I know that Washington State was playing Oregon very close for a good little while. Uh, if you got yeah. you were watching this game, right? Yeah, I watched this game. It was close in the first half, but Oregon was up three scores with three or four minutes left. Uh, shout out Cameron Ward after taking two weeks off is back to more of himself, but yeah. Oregon's just too good of a team. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Washington State showed that showed that they are actually a above competent football team uh, again after two yeah. thinker weeks. <laughs> it's the North Carolina thing to do, man. Oh, yeah. North Carolina, North Carolina thing to do. I mean, you look over at the stat sheet, dominated the stat sheets, uh, not dominated the box score, but lost the football game to a very bad, very bad uh, Virginia team. Uh, for example, if you don't know a lot about Virginia this year, their one win before this was against an FCS school, which was a close game. Um, yeah. so yeah, uh, North Carolina, you have been eliminated from the college football playoff contention. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, this was a football game right here. This was a football game, especially the first three quarters. Um, Tennessee came out just absolutely dominating Alabama in this football game. Um, but then Alabama comes out in the second half, and you see they blank Tennessee, uh, 27 to nothing, 27 unanswered points. Uh, Alabama. I say it every week. They're doing this thing where they're playing good defense and they're running the football. Don't count them out, man. 
Yeah, Tennessee just completely got shut down in the second half. I mean, their offense was abysmal in the second half. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Uh, never doubt out. Never doubt out Nick Saban, man. That's all I gotta say. Ole Miss. I don't think either of no. We didn't watch this game, but uh, Ole Miss ended up pulling this one out. Uh, a little bit of a scare there from Auburn. We've said I think Auburn's one of these teams that we've talked about. Their their record isn't the best, but man, they're not a bad football team at all. Especially a home under the Jordan Hare. I mean, this game was very similar to the Georgia Auburn game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Quinshawn Junkins, 21 carries, 124 yards, and touchdown. Shout out to him. Uh, go ahead, man. USC can't beat Utah. They're not physical enough. They're just too soft. Utah's offense is not that good without Cam Rising, and you let up 34 points to him. And Caleb Williams, no touchdown passes? Utah was just a better team. They were a better team last year. They're a better team now. And until USC starts playing defense, they're not going to be able to win these types of games. Yeah. Uh, USC put themselves in a very bad position with this loss. Um, They could go out here in, I think, two to three weeks and beat Oregon and Washington, and none of it really matter uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, USC... Welcome to the eliminated category uh, for the college football playoff. And Utah, speaking of Utah, real quick, uh, Cam Rising officially is not going to play this year, so we can stop asking the question is, you know, what are they going to look like when he gets back? Because he's not going to be back. Um, and out next year. Yeah. LSU, I'm not even going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, Missouri, statement win. In my opinion, statement win again, South Carolina. Is it time? Is it time to stop pushing that agenda? Is South Carolina just actually a bad football team? South Carolina is a bad football team. Yeah. All right. Well, then never mind. Not a statement win. Uh, but they do they do beat South Carolina by 22 at home, which is still kind of interesting. I mean, their running back was absurd uh, in yeah. this game. Luther Burden, honestly, Missouri's probably got one of the most slept on wide receiver rooms in the country. Um but Missouri lining up. If they keep doing what they're doing, they're lining up for a primetime game against the Bulldogs, man. They have a bye week going into the Georgia game in two weeks. There you go. Uh, Air Force beats Navy. A little bit of a sluggish game, but you know how that's going to go. Uh, surprisingly, we, we watched this game. We watched this football game. Uh, Air Force, 95-yard touchdown. Uh, I think it was the longest touchdown in their history, right? Was that what we saw? Yeah. It was yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, Tulane knocks off North Texas. North Texas a big third quarter to help them uh, keep that game close. Uh, Minnesota beats Iowa in a thriller, man, 12 to 10. I mean, hate I missed that one. This game, that game made me happy because now we don't have to see 11 and 1 Iowa in the Big Ten title game. Yep. Yep. I agree. And then UCLA closes the door on Stanford. Uh, questioning, I guess. Uh, after I saw Stanford play Colorado, I was questioning. I was like, dude, are they actually as bad as I thought they were? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they as, are. as I thought they were. <laughs> they it's are. just Colorado is also not very good. Uh, Mississippi State, Arkansas, man. Nail-biter. Whew. KJ Jefferson leads the game with 97 passing yards. And an interception. Uh, and, and by the way, this is Mississippi State's quarterback right here, leading rusher of the game. Uh, Rutgers beats Indiana. Really it's not two bad. Rutgers now. Huh? Don't say it. Rutgers oh, is two. Yeah, I see that. I didn't peep, peep that. Uh, Baylor beats Cincinnati. Uh, Memphis Dogs UAB. UNC Charlotte beats East Carolina ten to seven. Wow. Uh, Wisconsin beats Illinois. Nebraska beats Northwestern. Wake Forest beats Pitt. Oklahoma State beats West Virginia. I guess that was kind of significant. Oklahoma State's running back has the best stat line I've seen since Frank Gore in that bowl game last year, 29-282 and four tutties. Um, and that's really all I feel like. BYU beat Texas Tech. Kansas State beat the ever-living crap out of TCU. Uh, shout out my boy Kendall Carr right here since I saw his highlight. 
And oh, Nevada beat San Diego State, get their first win of the year. We talked about that game six to zero. They break a 16 game losing streak. And I'm not going to go through it, but just go look at that box score, man, because that box score is one of the worst I've ever seen. And then getting to where I want to come to. You want to talk about app real quick? Fire Sean Clark. That's all I got to say. I'm not going to say that out loud because I kind of like Sean Clark as a person, but. I'm not saying I don't. For a long time, man, for a very long time, I've been holding it in on this show. But I feel like today and this past week is finally the time for me to go on a slight rant about Clemson football. First off, if I'm the Clemson Athletic Board, I would have a sit-down meeting with Dabo Sweeney. They should have had it Sunday and just say, you got to go into the transfer portal or you're fired, okay? Straight up, Clemson has, or sorry, Dabo Sweeney has single-handedly, because of his loyalty, which it's hard, it's one of those things that's really hard to judge him and be like, dude, really? With his loyalty to this program and to his guys, because he doesn't want to go pull a guy that was developed three years at, I don't know, uh, what's that school that one dude was at this year? Blue school, Columbia, you know, something like that. It was an offensive tackle or Finchel Cyphers, who was at Virginia for however many years uh, when we needed a corner. Uh, it, it's, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. We we're four and three. We should have won this football game. Um, and, and it, the bad thing is, is Cade Klubnick didn't actually have that bad of a game. He really didn't. But our offensive line is terrible. Will Shipley, I remember when people were saying Will Shipley is going to be the next Christian McCaffrey. And now that man can't even get two yards a carry. I mean, the wide receiver room, people thought the wide receiver room was going to be the problem going in there. They've been the brightest spot of the offense. That's the insane, that's the insane part. Uh, Bo Collins, Adam Randall, uh, oh, God, Tyler Brown, I think is his name, freshman dog, uh, Jake bringing stool, our tight end has been really good. I mean, it's really frustrating. Our defense has been amazing, man, and we just can't get wins. And it's really frustrating because I'm a Steelers fan in the NFL, and it just makes me feel like I'm watching the Steelers two days in a row because Clemson can't score, and their defense is great. It's the same thing the Steelers do. Um, Garrett Riley, I thought, was supposed to be the the uh, you know the tape to the bandage uh, from last year where our offense wasn't very good, and it's, it somehow has gotten worse. I don't want to officially say it, but I am right here. If this is the threshold, I'm right here to saying fire Dabo Sweeney. It's really just starting to piss me off. Um, but that's my slight rant about Clemson football. Um, yeah, that's all. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, the AP poll real quick, like we usually do. Oh, okay. All right. Actually, we're not even going to talk about that. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, no surprises up here, right? I mean, the top six stays the same. Everybody wins. They stay the same. Um, Texas, Oregon, Alabama. Penn State only drops three, which is good for them. Uh, Oregon State, Ole Miss, Utah, Notre Dame. LSU up to 15. Missouri up to 16. North Carolina, drop, North Carolina drops to 17. Louisville's up at 18 now. Air Force in the top 20 first group of five team, I think, in the top 20 this year. Yep. Uh, Duke down to 20. Tennessee down to 21. Tulane to 22. UCLA to 23. USC drops to 24. And James Madison, yeah, woo, makes it in the top 25 finally with Florida with a huge gap, 167 yeah. to 34. Uh, being the first team out. Uh, and shout out uh, Toledo, Rutgers, and UNLV for getting votes. Uh, let's go over our our poll real quick since, you know, we do it every week so y'all can know how we're feeling. I'm going to run down 25 uh, to 11, just straight up real quick. 25, Tulane, 24, Duke, 23, Florida, 22, UCLA, 21, Louisville, 20, Southern Cal, 19, Missouri, 18, UNC. Air Force, 17, JMU, 16, LSU, 15, Penn State, 14, Utah, 13, Notre Dame, 12, and Ole Miss, 11. 
Okay, we're pretty similar. I've got Tennessee 25, Florida 24, Tulane 23, UCLA 22, Air Force 21, Southern Cal 20, Louisville 19, JMU 18, LSU 17, UNC 16, Missouri 15, Notre Dame 14, Penn State 13, Oregon State 12, and U uh, Ole Miss 11. All right, cool. So we got a couple. We have two or three, I think. Uh, same number, same team. Uh, yeah. team, I have Oregon State. They're they're coming into the top ten. They were at uh fourteen last week, but just with uh no, no, they weren't. They were at eleven last week. So with the amount of losses in the top ten, I had three teams in the top ten lose. So no, my bad. Two teams. So you know somebody had to pop up somewhere. I have Oregon at nine, uh, Texas at eight, and Alabama at seven. So out of the one loss teams, I do have Alabama ranked the highest. I uh, know I get people, oh, why well, you have Bama over Texas? Well, Texas beat them. I just think Bama has more quality wins than Texas does. I know that sounds kind of weird because Texas did beat Alabama. Um, at six, I have Oklahoma, five, FSU, four, Washington, three, Ohio State two Michigan, one Georgia. So my only movement was um, Washington or Ohio State flip-flopping at three and four, um, which I felt like was very valid movement. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I have Utah at 10, which you can tell me. It's the same thing with Oregon State, Utah, as you have with Bama, Texas. I know Oregon State beat Utah, but I think Utah's got more quality wins. Um, I've got Alabama nine, Texas eight. I've got Oregon at seven. I just feel like they're playing the best football out of any of the one loss teams. I've got Oklahoma at six, Washington five, Ohio State four, FSU three, Michigan two, and Georgia at one. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Del Gorcio just texted me. So shout out to him since he texted me while we are on on uh recording he's a huge air force fan so he's very happy with their performances right now um, also next week are we planning on doing or bringing back our live reaction to the college football playoff rankings uh yeah i think we should for sure so so stay tuned for that next week uh live reaction uh still can't show the uh the visual of it because of copyright on YouTube, yeah. um, but for sure, definitely we'll be recording while that happens, recapping this upcoming week. Uh, if things me. hold, what's your prediction for the top four right now? Top four going in, but see, that's the thing is we have a whole nother week to be played. No, I agree, but I'm saying right now, if they were to do it, I think they would go Michigan one, Ohio State two, Georgia three, FSU four. Okay, okay. I feel like that's reasonable. Um because today is Tuesday, so if they if they were dropping tonight, I do think Michigan would be one based off what we saw last year with Tennessee being one uh in the first rankings. I think Michigan would be one. I do think Georgia would be two though. I really do. Um and then I think I'm going to be honest with you. I think they had put FSU at three and Ohio State at four. The thing um, is, Ohio State's got two big wins. Like, you, you remember the committee. They're probably going to put Notre Dame in the top ten. That's true. So, they beat Notre Dame and Penn State. But FSU – and it depends on how the committee views other teams because FSU's beat Clemson. And LSU. They'll probably have LSU and, hot. And Duke. And Duke. And they beat the crap out of Syracuse, too. I know – I don't know. Whatever. Uh, yeah, that would be my four, though. Um, Heisman, you said spoiler alert, so go ahead and spoil it for us, man. Uh, Michael Penix is still my number one. The gap is closed, but it's still Michael Penix at one. Then we got Dylan Gabriel at two, J.J. McCarthy at three, Bo Nix at four, and Jaden Daniels at five. Yeah, um, so Jacob had a, a – coming to the Heisman voting moment the other day uh, and decided to put J.J. McCarthy in there, I heard, after I put him at three in mine. 
uh, because I read him his stats and Jacob goes, oh, I didn't know his stats were that good. So I think that's funny that all of a sudden he's in the top five. <laughs> I will say, I think Carson Beck's stats are better, and I don't have Carson Beck in my top five. Okay. Um, so we're rocking the same top three. Uh, Michael Penix, Dylan Gabriel. I do think Dylan Gabriel closed the gap a little bit more uh, this past oh, yeah. week. J.J. McCarthy has jumped from five to three for me. Carson Beck is at four, and for how bad I didn't want to do it, I did drop Caleb Williams out of the top five, and Jaden Daniels has re-entered my top five again for probably like the fifth time this year. Um, I didn't do a dark horse. I didn't either. Um, I I was wondering, in your opinion, if Bo Nix was considered a dark horse, but if you have him at four, I'm going to say that's a no. He can be. I think – a big, maybe not Heisman, but a guy that's really burst on the scene these past few weeks is Ollie Gordon at Oklahoma State. I mean, he's been going crazy these past couple of weeks if we're talking about dark horses. And Oklahoma State seems to have finally woke back up from their year-long nap. Yeah. Um, serious contenders for the Big 12 title game. Yeah. Uh, I, think, of it. I think one player, speaking of running backs, that if you know, we're really – going into the dark horse hole here. It's Quinshawn Judkins at Ole Miss. I mean, they're sitting there with one loss, and he's been solid all year pretty much. And then my another dark horse, in my opinion, honestly, and I he's probably not even really considered a dark horse at this point, but his performance on Saturday, um, it's it, you got to talk about Marvin Harrison Jr., I think. Oh, yeah. Um, as long as he's on the field, he's putting up at least 80 yards a game probably. Yeah. Um, and, and then two guys, maybe not Heisman numbers, but Heisman impact. If you watch Alabama play, I mean Dallas Turner, Kool Aid McKinstry, both two of the best players in the country. And we talked about a little about Dallas Turner last week, but it's just so hard uh, for these defensive guys to win it if they don't really have big numbers. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's get into biggest spread of the week in Superdog. So last week, biggest spread of the week. We had LSU versus Army. It was minus 30 when we picked it. Both said LSU covers. Uh, they won 62-0, to zero, so that was an easy cover. Uh, that puts Jacob still at a perfect record of 4-4, four and four, or 4-4-4, four four four, I guess. Um, and that puts me up to 2.5 out of 4. Um, so this week, we have Indiana at Penn State. Uh, Penn State is currently minus 32. Uh, what do you got, Jacob? As bad as I want to disrespect Penn State for making me look stupid, um, they're still a good football team. And they're angry, I'm sure, at the way they played. And I think they take it out on Indiana. I think they cover the 32 points. Yeah, this is a really tough one for me to pick. It was a 12 o'clock game. If this was a night game, I 100% would take Penn State. But for some reason, I can't let go of this little small latch I have onto Indiana somehow being a good football team. 32 is just too much for me in a conference game um, without it being the bottom, bottom barrel of the conference, which I guess Indiana might could be at this point. But I'm going to have to take Indiana to cover uh, 32. Okay. Uh, and then Superdogs. Last week, Jacob had... Eastern Michigan plus 12 and a half at Northern Illinois, which was a hit. And I had Northwestern plus 11 at Nebraska, which also was a hit. Um, that leaves me with a perfect record of four and four, four for four. Jacob is right behind me at three for four, though. Um, we kind of – I know yours is a big 12 game, but I don't know who it is, so I'd like to know now, man. Okay, uh, UCF at West Virginia. This might be surprising. UCF is a seven-point favorite. West Virginia at UCF, by the way. Yeah, West Virginia at UCF. I think the wrong team is favored here. I think West Virginia is a better football team. I think West Virginia gets the win. I definitely like them to cover seven points. Yeah. All right. Um, and then I'm also going in the Big 12. It's a game that we're going to preview later, I think. Yeah, um, so I guess I'm technically doubling down here. Uh, it's BYU at Texas line is minus 17 and a half. With Texas having a new quarterback in there, I know they're the better team, 
Um, but 17 and a half is a little bit too much for me for a five and two BYU team uh, to go in there. That's essentially, no, it is three scores. So I don't know if they go in there and they get beat by three scores, um, which now that I'm thinking about it, they could get beat by 17 and I still hit. So yeah, love it. Um, but yeah, let's, man, let's talk about this week. Uh, this week's slate is a little better than, than last week's. <laughs> um, Tuesday night, or well, tonight actually, my bad. Today is Tuesday. Uh, Liberty Western Kentucky is a little bit of an interesting game, but we're not gonna pick it. But I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, Liberty's still undefeated, but not a huge quality win. I would say this will be their first quality win, in my opinion. Um, if they got a take, what's up, Western Kentucky? Win, win. scores, huh? Wins by two scores. No, they just win. Okay. Uh, Wednesday night, don't care. Thursday night, we've got Syracuse at Virginia Tech, Georgia State at Georgia Southern. This will probably be a good game. I, well, actually, both of these are probably going to be good games. Virginia Tech, quietly, still. Me and Pam have a bet. I told him that if Virginia Tech makes the ACC title, I will give him $20. It's not happening. And if they don't, I don't got to give them anything. Always, always make smart bets, kids. Uh, <laughs> for Gambling is bad. <laughs> hey, we can go to this game Friday night, man. Florida Atlantic at Charlotte. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, we're not picking clips in this week, man. I don't even care. I honestly, Let's do it. It's a good I'm one. Not, I was about to. I was about to take this as my super dog. I'm just done with this team, man. I think y'all are going to win that game. NC State's not very good. <laughs> y'all might not cover, but y'all will win. We never win at NC State. And it's supposed to rain, too. That's good for y'all. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Southern Miss is 1-6 and six at App State up in the boonies. Uh, at minus 17, which for how bad this team's been playing, I'm not surprised. But Southern Miss is terrible. Um, But, yeah, let's let's talk about some games here. 12 o'clock time frame. And I think this is the yeah only game in the 12 o'clock time frame we're going to pick here. We've got Oklahoma's second biggest test of the year, probably, going to Kansas to play Kansas. OU is minus 10 on the road against a 5-2 and two Kansas team. Uh, what do you got? Oklahoma's got a loss coming, I think, this year. I don't know who it's going to be to. I just don't see them going 12-0. and 0. I'm going to take Kansas to win the game. That's going to be my big upset of the week. Okay. It's uh, bold. I'm going to still ride this, like, weird little – Oklahoma Dylan Gabriel train I've been on for some reason. Um, so I'm going to take Oklahoma to win 10. In my opinion, it's too much though. So give me Kansas to cover. All right, man. Talk about your boys. We do got some other interesting games I want to highlight real quick. Uh, I mean, this is interesting. Because yeah. FSU might not cover the spread. Yeah, they might not. Uh, uh, Maryland's at Northwestern. Another big spread, too. Uh, Takes a him minus 14 against South Carolina. It's great. I'm laying those points. Uh, Houston, Kansas State. That was almost my super dog. West Virginia, UCF. We talked about that a little bit. Next game I want to pick. I know what I know what you're doing. UGA, Florida, neutral site, Jacksonville, Florida, like it is every year. Uh, UGA minus fourteen and a half. I think I'm gonna go Florida with the upset. Really? I think I am. Nah, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have UGA win. 
but I'm gonna roll with Florida covering though. I just and maybe this is a little bit of fan talking. I just don't think that Florida matches up well with Georgia. I think Florida's going to have a lot of trouble stopping Dejon Edwards in the Georgia ground game. I think they're going to have tr- trouble running the football against Georgia. I think Georgia's going to make Graham Ertz beat them. I don't think he can beat us. Um, I like Georgia by about 17. Yeah, I don't I don't think he can beat Charlie. And that's exactly what I was going to say uh, was – Y'all definitely are gonna scheme to make Graham Murray beat you for sure. Yeah. Um, this is a game I said we were gonna pick this one. It's my super dog. It's BYU at Texas. Um, I know I have BYU as a super dog. I'm still gonna take Texas to win, though. I did this the other week too, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna take Texas to win, but I am obviously taking BYU to cover. I think I'm gonna do the same. I'm I'm a believer in Malik Murphy, but BYU is probably a better team than Houston is. And they beat Houston by a touchdown with Quinn Ewers playing most of the game. I think BYU probably loses by about 14 points. Yeah, I was going to say 10, 14. Uh, now this is – is this the biggest game of the day? I'd say, yeah. Yes. For sure. A lot of playoff uh, implications. Oregon at Utah. Oregon minus seven. What do you got? Look, Oregon, I'm super high on Oregon this year. I mean, preseason, I had them in my playoff. You look at Bo Nix's numbers, they're awesome. Uh, Their offense, Troy Franklin, Bucky Irving, I mean, those guys can really, really play. But this game is at Utah. Utah's physical. Utah has the better coach. And Utah has been there before. Give me the Utes in their second straight upset. Yeah. If y'all wanted to know, if y'all haven't figured it out by now, Jacob is actually a Utah fan and not a Georgia fan. Uh, (laughs) uh, I might have to take Oregon to win. I just think they're the better team. I know usually some spreads like this, I just take the winning team to cover. Uh, because it's weird. It's a weird spread. But I'm going to actually take Utah to cover. I think this is a field goal type of game. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great game. So get, yeah, I agree. Give me Oregon to win, Utah to cover. Um, and then also, three third time frame, we have a ranked matchup, Duke-Louisville. Um, Louisville coming off of a bye week after their pitiful loss to Pitt after starting the season 6-0. and They're at home against Duke, who is probably not going to have Riley Leonard. Um, they're favored by four. Uh, you're going to have to give me Louisville in this one, though. Um, and y'all know how I am with small spreads like this. Give me Louisville to win, Louisville to cover at home. Yeah, I'm feeling the same way. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I think the winner of this game is going to the ACC title game. I don't believe in North Carolina anymore. Um, Louisville's schedule is pretty easy, so I'm going to take Louisville to win and cover. And I think Louisville, because of this, is going to play in the big – or the ACC title game. Big 12? Big 10 title game? How many times? I don't know. ACC, final answer. <laughs> Mississippi State, Auburn, Purdue, Nebraska, a bunch of conference games. Uh-oh, watch out, Miami. Virginia might Nebraska. Get- Nebraska's quietly 4-3 and three after starting 0-2. We see you. Iowa State, Baylor, uh, Tulane at Rice. Any shot our old boy JT Daniels can pull off the upset. I don't know if he can pull off the offset, but he might be able to cover the spread. I will say that. Uh, any you... shot? Any shot? Any shot at all? No, I'm not giving. Sorry. Sorry, JT Daniels. Uh, no, I'm Cal's playing not... USC. Any shot Cal does it? I don't think no, so. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm not uh, even trying to be Caleb Williams biased. Your Cal is terrible. <laughs> Cal is bad. Uh Minus 11. Actually, matter of fact, USC might cover minus 11. They will cover that. Can't say it. I don't mean. Whoa, hold on. Boise State's favored. Super. Give me Wyoming and the upset. Super dog. Uh, Marshall at Coastal. That'll probably be a good that, That's probably going to be a pretty good game, honestly. Uh, Washington at Stanford. Um. Yep. Okay, here we go. Games we want to pick here. Tennessee at Kentucky. Tennessee is minus three and a half after they lost to Alabama. 
Uh, what do you got first? Even in years that Tennessee has been bad, they have owned Kentucky. And I don't think Tennessee's bad this year. I just think that they're not as good as last year. I like Tennessee to go on the road and win this game by about a touchdown. So I like Tennessee to win and cover. I'm the same way. I was going to pick Tennessee to win. I just think they're the better team. Uh, if you've watched, if you've watched this podcast the last couple of weeks, you know how I feel about Kentucky. I don't think they're actually a good football team. They're on pace to do the same thing they do every year, where they start out. They get they get preseason hype. They start out good. They get ranked, and then they go on a losing streak, and they finish the year at like seven and five, and then they're like, "Oh well, we're a basketball school." Like this, I feel like it's the same thing every year from Kentucky. Um, yeah, give me Tennessee to win and cover just because the spread's so small. I think they're the better football. Hey, scroll up one game real quick. Any shot Colorado State pulls it off? Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, downplay it. Uh, I think they do have a shot. Uh, minus 12, so I think they definitely have a shot to cover the spread. Yeah. Um, Troy, Texas State, that'll probably be a good game. I did not realize Texas State was 5-2. and two. Yeah, turning it around a little bit different from when uh, what we usually know. Now, this is, in my opinion, this is the biggest game in the nightcap. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And you can call me an Ohio State hater, whatever, Wisconsin is a tough football stadium to play in. Um, Ohio State's on the road, coming off a big win. It's going to be cold, uh, and they are favored by 14 and a half against the Badgers. Look, the way Ohio State's been playing this year, they're trying to get rid of this soft thing, right? They're playing more physical, slower, grinded-out type of football. Wisconsin's been doing that for years. They know how to play that way. Braylon Allen is one of the best running backs in the country. Um, I'm not brave enough to pick the upset here, but I am brave enough to pick Wisconsin to cover this game. And a letdown, maybe not a letdown, but um, going on the road after a big win, see Ohio State maybe come out to a slow start. Give me the Badgers. Really? Yep. This is the one. This is the one. I I doubted myself last week when it came to Ohio State's game. I was going to pick Ohio State, and I tried to go with the upset. But this week I'm confident. I think the energy is going to be there. I think Wisconsin is at the very least going to stay in this game. Uh, if they don't pull off the upset, whatever. But um, but I think they're at the very least going to stay in this game. Uh, Penn State couldn't get the ball uh, going on the ground last week very well, but I think Wisconsin is going to do that just fine. And in my opinion, that's the way you beat Ohio State is you run the football and you run a lot of time off the clock. Yep. Uh, give me Wisconsin to win this football game by – I'm not going to say, actually. Just give me Wisconsin to win this football game. I was about to say by like seven points or something like that, but no. Drop it in the comments. We hate Ohio State. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Certified. Uh, I didn't write this game down at first, but now I kind of do. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write it down now. Uh, Colorado goes on the road to the Rose Bowl to play UCLA and UCLA is favored by 17 points. Colorado coming off of a bye week, correct? Yes, they are. After their bad loss to Stanford. Um, 17 is a lot for me. And that's why I want to pick this one. Give me UCLA to win this football game, but give me Colorado to cover 17 points. I think I'm with you on that. Just because they're coming off a bye week. I think UCLA is an improved football team from early in the year. Dante Moore starting to get his feet wet a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think UCLA for sure wins. Wins by two scores, but I don't think they cover 17. Yeah. A guy that his stats aren't that well, speaking of just UCLA improvement, Stats aren't that well, but he's been a big factor for this football team for what I've seen, even though the stats aren't there. It's Carson Steele. He was a transfer from, I want to get this right, Ball State, I'm pretty sure. I think you're right. And he was one of the like leading rushers last year in all of college football. Um, so I think he's been a little bit of a difference maker there. Dude, North Carolina can never beat Georgia Tech there. And Atlanta. I just want to say that. They can never beat Georgia Tech there for some reason. Don't be surprised if Georgia Tech 
gets back to 500 in North Carolina. Yeah. Two I'll out. say this. Give me Georgia Tech to cover 11 and a half. Yeah. I could also I, – I, I, I couldn't say that. I, I could also see North Carolina going out there and just – Oh, yeah. Blow in there. Oh, yeah. No. Um, Old Dominion at James Madison. Their perfect record is on the line. Again, 8 o'clock on ESPNU. There you go, James Madison. Moving up in the world. Um, Cincinnati's at Oklahoma State. Oregon State's at Arizona. Uh-oh. Only favored by three and a half. Wow. Uh, give me Oregon That's State. a very losable game for the Beavers. I agree, but give me them to cover. Uh, yeah. I mean, I agree, too. <laughs> this is the last game I want to pick this week. Uh, it's UNLV at Fresno State. Uh, both these teams are six and one. Uh, potentially looking at, you know, a spot in the playoff rankings next week in the very back end with one of those football games. UNLV is at Fresno State. Fresno State is favored by seven and a half. I'm gonna Give take... me... go ahead. Go no, ahead. you're good. You're good. I was gonna just say, as bad as I want to pick UNLV to win this game. Fresno State win. UNLV cover, Fresno State win. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Fresno State outright wins and covers. Okay. So a little disrespectful to UNLV. You know what? No. No, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ride with you on this one. I'm going to go Fresno State win, UNLV cover. Um, but, yeah, I – I know usually we don't pick these types of games, but I'm, we're trying to shed a little bit more light on the group of five this year, just a little bit, uh, and try to pick a you know a group of five game once a week. Uh, if that's why you're wondering why we're picking UNLV and Fresno State, it's honestly it starts at what time? Ten thirty. Yes. So probably not even a game that I'm going to get to watch a whole lot of because I'm probably going to fall asleep. Um, but yeah, that's our pickums for this week. Uh. Last but not least, we've got two things. Oh, dude, we forgot to do it again, man. Favorite games of the week last week, real quick. Uh, mine were the first three quarters of Duke and FSU in Alabama and Tennessee. My most surprising game of the week, I had three. UVA, UNC, obviously. Uh, Houston, Texas, and Arizona State, Washington. Okay, for the surprising, I'll throw in Oklahoma and UCF. That's another surprising one to me. Uh, my favorite game, I'll tell you, on Alabama-Tennessee, that was a pretty good game. Also, Oklahoma-UCF, Houston-Texas. Um, yeah, I mean, good week. It was a sleeper week, but ended up being a good week. Never never quiet in college football. Um, And and I forgot to update everybody on the Pickham's record. For the first time this year, everybody give a round of applause to Jacob for beating me uh, in Pickham's. He beat me 5-4. to four. Which makes the records go to four and one and one and four. But Jacob again, it's like I'm the Vikings. I said this last week, so it's like I'm the Vikings last year. I'm I'm four and one, but I'm only six points ahead of Jacob. So if he can catch me uh and record wise, he's definitely got a chance to win it out. Uh with the Go Vikings. Jayhawks, baby. There we go. Uh hot takes. Last but not least, hot takes last week. But we didn't hit and neither of us hit. I know that. I had Jalen Milrow, 400 all-purpose yards, two total touchdowns. He he had the touchdowns and the win part. Um, I think he was short on the yards. So I think he had like 220 passing and only like 30 rushing or something like that. Um, and then Jacob had South Carolina covers the spread against Missouri, which uh... – <laughs> South Carolina, I now realize, is a bad football team. Yeah. Um, If you have a hot take, go ahead. I'm – Trying to just look real quick on what I want to go with. I think my hot take is going to be the country is put on notice and Malik Murphy has 300 all-purpose yards against BYU. Mm. That's a little bit of a cupcake one, bud. Hey, nobody thinks of anything of Malik Murphy now. You want me to go? I'll go. I'll go. Three hundred and three touchdowns. All right, three total touchdowns. Yeah, I've got a hot take. This is a weird hot take, 
and it's kind of similar to my one the other week, but it's a little bit different where I had went three top 15 upsets of the week. Mine this week is two undefeated teams get their first loss. Now, okay. if you ask me who those two teams are. <laughs> Liberty and James Madison. I can't necessarily tell you who they are, but if I had to say it would be Liberty and Ohio State since I'm riding this Ohio State thing. Uh, but, yeah, two undefeated teams lose their first game this week. Uh, if you wanted to know who the undefeated teams left are, uh, it is those top six teams in the rankings. So Oklahoma, FSU, Washington, Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia. And then there is James Madison, Air Force, and Liberty. I think that's just it. I think there's eight teams. So three group of fives. Uh, no, nine. Nine, yeah. Three group of fives and six power five schools. Yeah. So that's Three plus six is nine. Yeah, it is, man. Math. Woo, math. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, we appreciate y'all's support last week, uh, and we appreciate any future support this week. Uh, we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace out.